Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most back at it again with a tier list video. Avery LR32 here and destroy the ever living booty, booty, butt cheeks, boo boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1300 ladder. I think we finally hit the 1300 number. I'm not sure. I was gone all day today for a doctor's appointment that was six hours round trip, three hours there and three hours back. Luckily, our health is looking good. It was for some quick scans that I had to get done. Y'all have heard me talk about my VHL cancer treatment before, but we're looking good. I'm going to get myself an EKG and an echocardiogram. And other than that, everything is looking pretty good. So I hope y'all are having a fantastic day. Uh, we just made a video talking about PAC and then PAC makes a video basically not making excuses, but just he didn't need to talk about everything. We're going to cover that hopefully later on in the week. I'm extremely tired. I at least wanted to get out a tier list video for you guys um, so that we can talk about the meta post Indianapolis. I didn't want to do one post ban list because it was really up in the air. And this was a good way to kind of see where the format was at. So with that being said, I don't want to waste any more of your time. Let's just jump on into it. Rescue Ace is tier one. Um... Here's the thing with Rescue Ace. The boards it puts up aren't inherently all that scary. It's the back row that makes them good. They have to push into Nibiru territory, i.e. more than five summons, to like put out a Dweller to stop tier. I think that tier element was really overhyped um, at this YCS now that we see how much representation Rescue Ace had and what won, obviously being Rescue Ace. It's going to be interesting to see what happens at the YCS in Richmond, I think, November 4th and 5th, wherever the next YCS is, November 4th and 5th. There is one in Bolivia, but that's South American territory. They tend to get smaller YCSs, so I don't know if that's going to be a great piece of information to look at um, because South America tends to have a bit of a different meta compared to like North America and even Europe. You know, you look at Europe, Sun Avalon and Rico wins everything there, it seems. So whereas North America, some people will play it, but it doesn't do all that well, which is interesting to see. So regardless though, Rescue Ace is a very good deck. It's a very, um, I don't even want to say stun. It's just, it's got a very good grind game. The plays that it has really reward the pilot so the better you are with the deck the better the deck as a whole is similar to like sky striker in a way where like the better the pilot the better the deck type of thing it's not rng like tier element although with that being said tier element is a tier one deck right now it's something that if you have been playing for a long time and you still want to pick up and play for this format then you're going to have a great time which is fine because like like tier elements a good rng deck like the rng works in your favor you're gonna do well you know it's definitely not a bad deck by any stretch of the imagination and that's something else i want to mention too with this format is that there's literally like over 20 decks that you can play and see success with whether it's the local level regional level ycs level you know that top cut at this ycs in indianapolis was very diverse. I mean, for God's sakes, we saw Exo Sister. We didn't. Did we see Flunder? I think we saw like one Flunder in the top at some point. Um, regardless whether we did or not, the point is is that there's a lot of different decks that you can play. Now, with that being said, um, we need to talk about this here. So, I don't see Horus on this tier list, and like I say in all of these tier list videos, I don't know how to make one of these damn things. So, whoever made this didn't put Horus on here. But I'm gonna wrap in by Steel Horus with this, specifically by Steel Horus Dragon Link, because that's basically what that was uh, that topped at Indy. It was Horus by Steel, but it was basically just Horus by Steel with a Dragon Link package. I'm gonna put that up here in tier one. Um, I'm tempted to put it in tier two or rogue, but it depends on how the format establishes. It could drop to tier two. It depends on how much people prepare for this matchup. And like if people's side decks get to a point where, you know, if they're side decking for the meta decks, then in turn with what they're siding, they can also side for Horus by steel. So it is between like tier one and tier two, but I don't do like tier 1.5 and shit because I feel like you just need to be able to make up your mind at that point. <laughs> so um, tentatively, we're going to leave it here in tier two with the potential for it to be tier one. It just depends on how much people prepare for this deck. Uh, let's go ahead and jump around here a little bit. Um, ugh, heroes, heroes didn't do shit at this YCS. Same with ultra guys. They didn't do shit at this YCS. So we need to talk about Chimera. Um, it had no representation in the top cut. And by top cut, I mean like top 32. Um, 
I gotta put this in tier one. This is a sleeper deck. Um, I, if if you've been keeping up with the channel for a while, then you know that our homie Valley D has been on Chimera branded for a while. And the plays that this deck has is very good when you know the intricacies of it and you spend a lot of time with it. I don't know why it's not converting at higher events because this deck is good. And I feel that it's honestly a sleeper pick of the format and has the potential to be tier one. Um, I feel like maybe that's because of the fact that people jumped on tier thinking that tier was just going to be strictly better than Chimera branded. But I feel like as the format progresses, I think we're definitely going to see Chimera branded uh, show results at the very least the regional level, maybe not the YCS level, but definitely the regional level. This is a deck that you don't want to sleep on. It's very, very good. Um, Tistania is still god awful. Maybe there's something here. Like I know it just got new support, but until I see some proof, this deck is garbage. Um, Cash, Cash Tira only works if you're in the Jeff Jones family. Like, Jeff Jones' fiance, like, did well with this, like, an OTS championship. They made it into, like, a stun deck, but, like, outside of the, that, the deck just, like, loses to itself. It's not, it's not impossible to play a going second deck, like, rank 8 Axis, but it's, like, why play that when you just have better choices? Still a decent deck for locals. I mean, really, you could play any of these decks at locals and have a good time. So we got to talk about this. Um, Pat said that this deck has the potential to be tier two, and he did his tier list video. I already talked about that in my video where I talked about him. Um, but no, Makonko is fucking garbage. Like, it did not translate at all to the YCS. Um, this deck is cute. You can do angelic ring things, but take this to your OTS tournament, like an OTS championship, and have at it. But you're taking this to a regional or a YCS I just don't think you're going to see success. And that's the weird thing. Like, even though we're in such a diverse meta, and there's literally like 20 plus different decks you can play, we're still putting things here in the booty booty butt cheek category just because of the fact that, like, th these decks just didn't translate at all to the latest event. And there isn't a lot of hype around them for one reason or another and on top of that sometimes they're just not all that good and you and remember our booty booty butt cheek patent pending category is for all those decks that are just hot dog water um branded is tier two it's still consistently a tier two deck um yeah i mean I, I, chimera branded like you could put it up here with like tier one but i think just branded in general is like tier two it's it's still pretty solid um flunder loses to itself it's rogue af um, this is Infernoble. The deck is Rogue AF. Even with the Angelic Ring thing, it didn't do shit at the YCS. Like, I don't know if people are still just messing around with it, but, like, I'm sorry, but Angelic Ring is not Smoke Grenade of the Thief. So, like, Infernoble just still, like, loses in time when you pay 1,200 light points three times because you do it three times on one each on the field spells or three times in total if you hit all three. Dark World is still Rogue AF. Here's the problem with Dark World. Even with Ken and Gen, you have to make so many fucking concessions when you play this deck. You basically have to tell yourself, if you're playing Dark World, okay, I'm going to play Ken and Gen. Ideally, you're going to play three Gen, two Ken, with a Rota, and hope to God that your opponent doesn't have Droll or Shifter. And if you do, you pick up your cards and say, let's go next game. Because that's literally what's going to happen. It's going to be an auto-turn skip, and, and you're just going to cry. Um, Mana Diem is definitely tier two. Triff showed that this deck is very good. Um, Triff's, Triff's honestly like a very good pilot. He's a very good player. Like all of the jokingly jokes aside and like all the YouTube persona and personality and stuff. He's a very good player. He knows what he's doing. Um, this is a, actually, honestly, no, forget that. We're putting this in tier one. This deck is good. Especially like if your King Calamity goes off uninterrupted, like that's just a free win. Um, Let's jump around here a little bit. Sword Soul's really fallen off. I'm going to put it in Rogue. It's one of those decks that you can have fun with at, like, locals. But I think if you take it to a regional or a YCS, you're just not going to see any success. Vanquish Soul is um, very solid tier 2. You can take this to a regional and see some success. Um, we saw some people playing it at the YCS, but it just didn't translate well. But very solid tier 2. I'll give it that. Eldritch, I feel like, has a chance. But I feel like just all of the decks in the room just sort of outpace it now. Um... So, like, maybe you'll see some success at regional level, but nah, it's it's in the booty booty butt she category. Dinosaurs are god-awful. That deck is trash. Um, Sprite Runic, all variations of Runic. We saw Johnny Nguyen get top 32 with Runic Stun, which is insane. Again, it goes to show that the beginning of a new format with a new set coming out that same weekend goes to show that really you can top with anything and see success. Um, I'm not going to comment on the Sprite Adventure build that topped the YCS because... I'm just going to say I know that player because he's been to my locals before, and uh, I'm just going to say that everybody gets lucky. 
and uh, I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. His attitude is not the best, and I'm going to leave it at that. So I don't count that deck for anything worth a damn. Um, Runic in general is still a very solid engine, though, whether it's Sprite for higher Runic, what have you, all variations of Runic. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Virtual World is hot garbage. <laughs> this, this deck is horrible. Uh, Pendulums is actually still god-awful. I don't give a shit what people say about the Exodia deck, by the way. It's garbage. Uh, like, Jeff Leonard's cool. He's just like my dad. Like, he was playing Mystic Mind and stuff when my dad was. And like I've always said before, my dad's the OG Jeff Leonard because he was playing before Jeff Leonard was Jeff Leonard. Um, the Pendulum stuff, even with Zark, is just terrible. Like, you have to go first and establish a board. There's really no grind game in that deck. And the Exodia deck's hot garbage. Like, Jeff Leonard went 4-0, and then he proceeded to lose the next three matches because people figure the deck out, sadly. Um, so yeah, uh, no, the deck's terrible. Marin Cess is terrible. Uh, that, that deck's fallen off worse than my love life. Trap Tricks is terrible. I, I beat that deck every time with fucking Tier Element. It's actually really funny. I beat this deck playing a Monarch deck. Like, I was just screwing around on EDO Pro, and I started playing Lithium's, uh, Monarch build, and I beat a 60, uh, no, 60? I think it was a 45-card Trap Trick build. It was 60 cards. Whichever one it was, it's garbage. Like, don't play this deck. Exo Sister is rogue right now until the format solidifies. Its best matchup is Tier, so whenever Tier's in the room, this instantly becomes a good deck drytron i'm gonna put in rogue it did get 51st even though that doesn't really mean a whole lot at the ycs but still the fact is that someone played it and did decently well um so yeah this this deck is still very solid purely's tier two purely's really fallen off you can play a lot of non-engine but i just feel like that the tier one decks just really kind of outpace it at this point um yeah like it's it's just really fallen off sun avalon rika is definitely a tier one deck um I think it's the only deck besides Man and DM that puts up a board of negates, to be honest, which is interesting. What happened to Gold Pride? Like, Gold Pride Punk just fell the hell off. Like, I don't know what the hell happened. Um, this Sprite stuff, I don't know why it's here twice, but this just ties in with, like, Sprite for higher runic. Um, Sprite, Kishi Kill, all that. This is tied to the hip. Gold Pride's fallen off. Terrible. Unchained is definitely tier one. Still a very good deck. Um, do not discount this deck. Um... I feel like the Scareclaw Mana Diem stuff kind of goes hand in hand. If you're just talking Scareclaw, then the deck is terrible. But if you're talking like with Mana Diem, then yeah, like it's it's just one and the same. Labyrinth. Um, I'm going to put in tier two. Um, it's not terrible. Definitely see some success at locals, obviously. I mean, any of these decks will see success at locals. It's tier two. I feel like that's because of the fact that Eradicare is just not as much of a blowout card anymore. Um, but like it's still a really solid pick. Like they just got the new Butler monster um out of the new set so i think it'll just take some time for people to cook up with this dinomorphia loses in time you take five more seconds for each play and then they lose in time i'm kidding don't slow play like that i'm literally joking um but no dinomorphia is fucking awful um god where do i even put math mac like if you hit the circular every game then yeah like you're good but like no it's it's terrible uh, plunder is terrible i'm sorry like even with someone had told me on edo pro some guy I was playing against said oh ken and gen would be good in plunder but like i'd rather just play it in dark world and just make those concessions and be playing a strictly better deck like dark world strictly is just a better deck than plunder especially with ken and gen salad is rogue you'll psh, shit i'm gonna go to a regional someone's gonna be playing salad it's gonna be eight rounds that salad player is gonna go one and seven because i always lose to salad no matter how good or or bad of a player they are uh you stop the junk speeder in the synchro decks and they lose so it's it's not that hard um ah, sky striker i can't put it in rogue like it, it's it's not there man like Apparently, there's rumors going around that they're getting new support, but, like, I don't feel like Sky Striker's that good anymore. Even, like, as a sub-engine, I just don't feel like Striker can get you there. Like, especially when, like, Vanquish Soul is, like, a deck that I feel like can grind better than Sky Striker, especially once you get those three different attributes in your hand. Like, it becomes one of the best decks in the room. Uh, like, our homie Valley D was, like... The Vanquish Soul deck, like, just does nothing, and then once it gets, like, multiple attributes, all of a sudden, like, it's a, an amazingly strong deck, and, like, it's basically impossible to stop. Um, I just feel like, like, if you want to play a back row deck, you're better off playing Rescue Ace. Like, doesn't Sky Striker do the same thing, but Rescue Ace just does it better? Like, oh no, I said it out loud, but, like, I feel like it's true. Same with Eldritch. Like, I feel like Rescue Ace just does it more efficiently. I want to put Sky Striker in Rogue, but, like, it's just, it's really fallen off. It really has. So really diverse though like 
The booty booty butt cheeks, even then, like, these decks have the potential to do something, right? Like, they're not totally, like, out of the ballpark bad. Like, if you remember back when tier element was tier zero, you can go watch my tier list video on that. And it was, like, tier was, like, up here and everything else was underneath it because everything else just couldn't keep up with tier. So it's, it's really interesting to see that dichotomy now with us being in a diverse meta. But guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is there a deck that I'm missing here? Let me know down in the comments. Is there any deck that you have a question on that you think is good? Um, for anyone that comments Cyber Dragon or Aromage, no, those decks are still terrible. But they have the potential because we are in a diverse meta. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.